after all of this work, we're stuck looking at this. The way BMW designed the i8, it was pretty clear they had no intention of owners working on their own cars, and even hearing some dealership stories, BMW probably doesn't want to work on your i8 either. Accessibility to anything under the front or rear of the car to do any sort of non-trivial work is a bit of a pain. Access to the front of the car is supposed to be a two-man operation. There is a hood release in both of the door jams that's supposed to be pulled simultaneously, and then two people raise the hood in tandem, and there's no hood prop or gas strut to keep the hood open. You need to shove an Allen wrench, a screwdriver, or there's probably even some way overpriced BMW special service tool into two holes in the hood hinge to keep it propped open. The story in the rear of the car isn't all that much different, but thankfully it's designed for one man access. You do need to remove a couple interior panels, and then there is a final metal panel for the engine access. This is held on by a couple thumb screws, but if those are too tight, then you need to get an Allen wrench to get those out. Under normal circumstances, this wouldn't be a problem, but if you're like me and you grew up with 80s and 90s shipboxes, project cars, then you know the importance of being able to quickly access under the hood to see where the smoke and or fluids are leaking from. In my case, I'm putting the engine from a 90s shipbox into my i8, so we need to remedy this situation. I designed a quick access engine cover, which is easily removable in a matter of seconds with no tools, and also has a viewing window so we could do some quick visual troubleshooting, as well as see our pretty cool 3D printed induction system. For this project, I used the services of Senka Sen for some aluminum, polycarbonate, and carbon fiber parts, as well as some 3D printed nylon on my own manufacturer. So let's jump over to Fusion 360, take a look at the components, how they're laid out, and then we'll get to the actual part assembly. As usual, this design starts with a 3D scan. If you caught my previous video about utilizing the Einstar and some of the tips and tricks, you'll know that you want to do this in sections. So we can get rid of that and we just have the small section of the interior access panel with a higher resolution, much more detailed than we would want for the full body. And you can see here uh, an example where a typical structured light scanner will tend to struggle a little bit around the holes. You lose a little bit of definition, but it is still more than enough to get an accurate placement, which we're going to use for designing our cover. So this cover is going to be designed in a sandwich construction. Uh, there's going to be multiple layers to it. The first of which is a 3D printed spacer, and that's going to take up most of the area in between the body panel and the top of our interior panel. We still have some gaps to address, which will get filled up by additional components. The next layer to our sandwich is a polycarbonate panel. This is going to function as our viewing window to the engine bay. This is also a little bit less than a quarter inch thick. This is the thickest size of polycarbonate that Senka Send offers. We chose this because it would be less likely to vibrate and or sag. Uh, polycarbonate is quite heat resistant, but we want to make sure it was as robust as possible. We can see where we aligned the holes in the panels with our 3D scan. Entirely functional for what we need. The next piece in our sandwich is a bent aluminum panel. This is what is going to follow the angle of our interior panel. Here you can notice where we have some countersinks into the aluminum panel, and that's where we are going to fasten the bottom part of our sandwich together. This is what's going to hold most of the assembly as one unit. And then we're going to top our sandwich with some carbon fiber panels just for aesthetic purposes. Probably also lends a little bit of stiffness as well, but it just looks cool. And the final piece that we're going to do is a gasket, which in the assembly, you see it poking through the bottom of the mesh a little bit. And that's because the intent is that it's going to be under compression. We can bring in our hardware and then work backwards and get an idea for how this is assembled. Remove the carbon fiber. You can see some countersunk fasteners right there. We remove the aluminum panel. You see those just pass through the polycarbonate. And then finally we have some threaded inserts into the 3D printed piece that's going to hold everything together. That's about it for the design. So we're going to order up some laser cut parts and get started on 3D printing our base. So here's the base of the engine cover. This is 3D printed in PA6 carbon nylon. And because it's such a large component, it was broken up into multiple pieces to fit on my printer. And those are all held together with 
dovetail joints and it doesn't offer a whole lot of rigidity because it's pretty small and they, they flex but really it's just to locate everything together hold it together you might think these brass parts are heat set inserts but they're not they're actually a knurled split insert that gets pressed into the plastic and then expands as you put the fastener in i prefer to use these over the heat set inserts i found them a bit more reliable and i've never actually had them spin or tear out which i can't say the same about the heat set stuff Assembly is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to start stacking everything up. First, we are going to lay the polycarbonate panel over our printed base, then align the sheet metal part on top of that. It is a bit of a tedious process. We're going to screw all these fasteners in. You can see the panel is much stiffer now. Then we're going to go and remove them one by one and countersink them on the drill press as far as we can. Couldn't reach all of the fasteners on the drill press, so we had to resort to the hand drill to finish them off. In hindsight, probably should have just used the hand drill for the whole thing. We're gonna lay the carbon fiber panel on top and then drop in the rest of our fasteners. Next, we gotta take everything back apart and then pull some of the protective sheeting back on the polycarbonate. The polycarbonate is gonna ship with a protective layer to keep it from scratching. The plastic can scratch quite easily, so you do need to be careful while you're working with it. After everything's unmasked, we're gonna go through and reassemble everything again. To affix the carbon fiber panels to the aluminum, we're gonna glue it into place with some RTV. I typically like to use the right stuff from Permatex, and I like it a little bit better than the cult classic of Honda Bond. What we're gonna do before we glue them into place is mask off the edges with some painter's tape. We're just going to dab some adhesive across the panel and then squish it into place. We're going to apply a bead of silicone to where the two panels made up so we can fill any remaining gap. And then peel back the tape to reveal our clean transition. Last step is to apply the rubber base panel, which is a squishy Buna end that is adhesive backed. We just peel the adhesive, start lining it up, and then work our way all the way around the panel. Nice clean finished result. And then at this point, we can peel off the inner layer of protective plastic. I went through a couple different ideas on how to actually attach this thing to the car from threaded fasteners to cam locks, but ultimately decided on Amazon's finest quick release bumper latches. These worked out really well. One of the surprising aspects was how little displacement was required to latch and unlatch this, which worked out really well because the panel is under only very slight compression and only moves a limited amount when it's unlatched. And I was worried about it releasing freely, but I had no issues at all. Trim and thread the studs into place. I think at this point, this part's pretty much done. The only upgrade or change that I might make in the future is to add some short white LED strips to the bottom and tie that into the trunk light so that when I open the hatch and remove the lid, that the engine bay will be well lit and then I can see and work on anything without having to reach for an external light. Overall, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It looks great, it fits great, it removes really easily, but until we get the 13B in the car, the only downside is that after all of this work, we're stuck looking at this. 
Now that the panel's been done for a few weeks, I haven't had any issues with it driving around on the car, but we wanted to be able to put some more heat into it in a high performance driving scenario. So we went to Lime Rock Park and the SCP Euro Proving Grounds, which is referred to as an autocross course, but it's really kind of like a mini road course with a lot of grassy runoffs. This allows you to really explore the limits of your car without worrying about hitting a curb or a tire barrier. And it was great to throw the car around, slide it around a bit and get it ready to run on the big track. I'm going to try to do a number of track days on the stock motor so I can get a baseline understanding of what the cooling system capacity is and look for any shortcomings on the car when you put it in that sort of scenario. I'm sure the i8 was never really designed as a track car, but it seems to hold its own pretty well so far and we're gonna explore that a little bit further. So far, I found the car to be really neutral and controllable. You can throw it into oversteer or understeer at will, and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun with an extra two to 300 horsepower. The only downside with the stock form is that it does deplete the battery pretty quick, and then once the battery is depleted, you're left with a whopping 230 wheel horsepower, which gets kind of lame pretty quick. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to check out Sun Cut Sun for your laser cut part needs and stay tuned for upcoming episodes because we still have a lot of problems to solve and a lot of parts to make. So see you next time.